Okay, as you know, we're both coming from an electrical engineering background. Mm -hmm. So, and what I found out over the years is when you go into the agile community, they a lot talk about a lot of about Kanban and all that stuff, and they start. Um, comparing the manufacturing with the software engineering yeah. and I feel that's pretty pretty different actually can you can you uh, and it's actually a, f uh, a fail if you do it completely yeah I, I think and, and and maybe we could get back to a, a sort of basic characteristic of software engineers as they may differ from traditional electrical right. engineers right. is that you know as electrical engineers at least of our age <laughs> and things like that thanks for saying that, that. <laughs> we 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 entered electrical engineering during an analog age That's true, and yeah. and we we don't see the world as consisting of two binary states. Right. Uh, you know, we, we see this whole range of values between zero and one. Right. And and so we, we don't view worlds as, oh, this methodology, either I need to accept 100% of this methodology or I need to accept 0% mm -hmm. of this methodology. We, right. we, we, we see it as a, a more of a continuum that there are sensible things that we can accept mm -hmm. and other things that we can end right. up rejecting. Right. Yeah. And that is certain pre present in manufacturing, the ideas of manufacturing. The, there are some superb ideas in manufacturing like reducing batch size in processes, working with smaller batches. And now, We've always done work in small batches in engineering. Mm -hmm. Is that's that that's been that's the true. way? You, nobody would ever write ten thousand lines of code before they would test it. Yeah. And you know, and hardware designers would breadboard their designs, get a portion of the circuit working, and then do other stuff. So batch size has always been present in engineering practices. I think we're getting more and more aware of the importance of working in small batches in all domains of engineering. Uh, but the interesting thing about the manufacturing view of batch size is that they started worrying about the issue of batch size probably 50 years earlier than we did. That's true, yeah. And they actually have a good mathematical understanding of the trade-offs associated with their, it, rather than approaching batch size as a philosophical issue mm -hmm. that you know small batch sizes are intrinsically good, mm -hmm. they view it from the perspective of we're making a trade-off between holding cost and transaction cost, and there is an economically optimum batch size. Mm -hmm. and, and the nice thing about informing engineering practices from some of those manufacturing ideas is we can actually engage with the issue more quantitatively using mm -hmm. those tools than we traditionally have. Mm -hmm. And they, they've got great ideas on controlling inventory, they've got great ideas on uh, batch size, they have other ideas that are actually I would say very toxic in an engineering environment. Which are? And Probably the most dangerous idea is that you always end up optimizing a process if you minimize the variability. The yeah. And it, it's not that that is a false statement in the domain of manufacturing. In, in manufacturing, we actually do. If you minimize variability, you will maximize the economic value of a process. But when you start getting to, to other domains, minimizing variability has some very severe consequences. And it's it just, it's simply the inference that because it works in manufacturing, it works everywhere, is really the dangerous inference. So what's the difference in software engineering? Why is variance uh, well, well, it, it, needed? You know, the, 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 the essential difference is that Variability is the constant traveling companion of innovation. Right. It's like a north magnetic pole and a south magnetic pole. You always find them together. <laughs> and you know, if you're hoping to find a world where there is innovation taking place and there is no variability, mm -hmm. you're just not going to find that. Right. And so what happens is when we, when we choose to do something in a new way, we introduce uncertainty. If our belief is we should drive all the uncertainty out of a process, we will also drive the innovation out of a process. And 
and, and I think there are, there are just much more sophisticated ways of thinking about variability and processes and to say what, under what circumstances does variability create economic value. So it's not reducing variability, but it's rather minimizing it, right? No. Or is it the other yeah, way around? In manufacturing, it's all about minimizing, minimizing variability. It. It's yeah. treated as yeah. a, a, an automatic good to minimize variability. Mm -hmm. Now, in engineering, it's going to be much more refined in the sense mm -hmm. that it doesn't mean if minimizing variability is bad, that doesn't mean maximizing variability is good. good. Yeah. is that what, what like, like we talked about yeah. in the course, what right. we're, we're looking for is situations where variability will be processed through an asymmetric payoff mm -hmm. and that ends up increasing the upside. Right. And, and I'll give you a little example I use a lot with manufacturing people. A manufacturing person will tell me, they'll say, I like to minimize variability. That's the best thing to do. Fair enough. And I said, is it the best thing to do in all cases? And they say, yes, it is. I said, okay, let me pose you a problem. There are 10 runners in a race. They all have the same mean running time, mm -hmm. plus or minus, you know, a hundredth of a second and things. Which runner will you bet on to win the race? Mm -hmm. Will you bet on the one runner with the highest standard deviation in their running times or the one with the lowest standard deviation in their running times? Okay. And this hurts the brain of <laughs> manufacturing people because it's obvious the correct answer is the tail of performance that has the highest standard deviation is the runner who has the greatest probability of winning that race. Yeah. And the race is a classic example of an asymmetric payoff mm -hmm. because only the fastest runner wins. Everybody else ends up losing. Yeah. And, and I think the, the issue is we, we have many, many situations like that in product development mm -hmm. where there is a payoff asymmetry between the upside and the downside. Right, right. And it all comes down uh, um, basically that you have to look at, if you have the batches, uh, that you look at the queues, don't you? So isn't it important to look where my batches are in, in, in yes. multiple and, phases? And look at the queues. And that, you know, it, that's another interesting aspect of you know, maybe perhaps how we can be better informed through some of the manufacturing ideas, which is that manufacturing is very concerned with the amount of inventory. Mm -hmm. But in manufacturing, the inventory is physical objects. Yeah. And so if the inventory in a factory doubles in a one week period, you see piles of stuff on the you factory floor. You see all floor. those parking lots with all those cars standing around. It's so obvious, yes, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And in engineering, the problem is the inventory is information. Mm -hmm. Information is intrinsically invisible. So in an engineering domain, not only is our inventory invisible, but also our flow is invisible mm -hmm. and our batch size is invisible. And, and so it has been much more challenging for us in engineering to be paying attention to, in, to recognize that there's, there's inventory there and to manage inventory using right. the ideas that are used in manufacturing, like the Kanban system right. that has worked so well in both domains. Right, right.